This week on House of David Ministries, we learn about coming back to the basics. Sometimes we tend to forget why Jesus came and died for us. Yes, He loves us and gave us the opportunity to be forgiven and set free, but He also wants us to be completely sold out for Him and have that genuine relationship that He first designed us for. We have to learn to go back to the basics and regain that understanding that was once so important and turn back to Him as our Lord and Savior. When you read the Bible and you feel things comfortable, it means there's a love of Christ in you, 100%. But if you feel you are convicted, yes, there's something is missing. And if, if it's harder for you and harder and harder, it means the love of God is diminishing is because you allowed that. Your flesh does not want to submit. And that's where the church is today. In many cases, that's why we cannot preach this hard messages today because people leave. Why people leave? Because they got convicted and they say, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear this. Uh, I got enough in this world of trouble. You see, God brought you to victory. And if we could take this with gladness, it means the love of God is in fullness within us. And we say, well, praise be to God. Yeah, I know it's God speaks to me about these things, and I should be considering because it's not the pastor who's ta talking. It's the, the Word of God. If I love Jesus and the Word of God is speaking to me harshly about these things, it's not to hurt me, but to help me. That's why the church, in early church, and uh, any time after any movement, by the way, any time after revival, people are like flowing with butter. Everybody is so flexible. Everybody is so soft. And they do what God says, no problems. But again, years later, Callister is building up, and people begin to build that shell around themselves. Amen. That's not the way God wants. And imagine if you're going to build shell and shell and shell, Imagine if the church is building that shell, what is going to be left with, with entertainment, and don't ever say a word that is convicting me, because I will never be back. You see what I mean? So nice music, concerts, food, entertainment, and all other things will be acceptable more than a straight word of God, pure word of God. That's not to what God has called us to be? That is not. That is not. That is not. A lot of things are missing today. Submit to one another. Love one another. Serve each other. Oh my God. All these things. When I look into these things, I say, Lord, forgive us. Help us to build what you want us to build. In our personal life, in the life of others, help us to come back to where we needed to be. And friends, if we're not going to be awakened now, it's going to get worse. So the church will become completely prayerless, fastless, sinful, and powerless. We don't want that. We don't want that. We underestimate in Satan. He works over time. Over time to do what he's planning to do. You see, I heard one preacher said, and I agree with him. God has a plan for your life. And the devil has a plan for your life. Don't forget. The devil has a plan for your life too. Don't forget that he doesn't. And guess... It's up to you to which plan we are going to submit. God's plan or Satan's plan. And we surely can if we are not going to be careful. We are warned in the scriptures many times over about the last days. Perilous times. And we thought, well, that's not about me. Oh, yes, it's about us. It's about us. It's about us and our walk in Christ. 
It's so serious. I'm not talking about the third party that is coming to Christ because they're just going there because of their parents' influence or that's their church for generations and they go in there because they belong to that church or been baptized in that church. I'm not talking about that. This is absolutely out of my uh, message today and that's not in the Bible at all. We're not talking about traditional churches that people go in there for whatever reason. No, we're talking about the church that is born again. But through the blood of Jesus and walking in victory in everybody's life. Amen. Amen. I could bring, I could have bring many examples and we are not the only ones. It's the same trick that the devil does. It's not God who is doing the devil, by the way. That it started from the beginning. He is the deceiver. And don't think that we are so powerful that uh, it's, it's, it's nothing. He's not going to do anything. He's, if he was able to deceive the first church, that was the most, was more, more powerful church in the time of the apostles. You think we cannot be deceived? And apostles, they were warning us and them and still warning us that we will be deceived if we are not careful. And I would say, I don't care how much charismatic we are, you may proclaim that you'll never be deceived. You will be if you are asleep. I guarantee you that you are going to be deceived if you're not going to do what Christ said. Because the devil is the same. All right? So don't fool yourself that, oh, well, I don't have to do anything. I'm okay. I know who I am in Christ, and the devil will never deceive me. Listen to me. The Bible says, Paul said himself, be aware. Be aware. Be careful that you may think that you're standing so that you may not fall. Paul said that. To who? Do you think we are greater than him? You think because we live in such a, um, a sophisticated world that everything is fine? It's worse. We live in the last days and he's working overtime. Look around what's going on. And choose for yourself who you're going to serve. Choose for yourself how and who you're going to serve. If you want to know how people serve Christ, if we don't have any examples anymore, and that is possible because everywhere you go into the church, you see some kind of a problems. I personally cannot find the church anywhere I go that will walk in holiness and purity and the word is preached just as the Bible says. I cannot walk in the church anywhere anymore without being entertained. Then you know what I do? I look back into the times where the churches were sold out. And it was a period of time where it was. One of them I brought it to your attention in a Russian, Russian society. Uh, when they were underground, when they were persecuted how they behaved. I look at their example, how they behaved, at their faithfulness. I don't look at their faults, but I look at their good side, how they stood up. I look, I, I look sometimes at the churches in India right now when people are sold out and they walk for miles just to, 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 to hear Christ and to worship Him and to give Him all the glory. I look at the people that, uh, as an example to me, that they come at 5 o'clock in the morning for miles, bare feet just to pray. They are the examples. Here we come to church, the doors are closed. And uh, it's written on it. You cannot get to pastor because he's too busy. He's a businessman. He has a little, a big board around him and you have to make an appointment and he'll ask you, what is it for? Okay, that's one thing. Secondly, service times, Wednesday night at 7 p.m., Sunday morning, Sunday night. That's when you come. But if person needs to come and pray, the church is the place that must be open. What I like about the Old Testament temple, they never shut down, they had never a day off. That place was open 
If you're talking about Pharisees and Sadducees, yeah, okay. But that place was open. And do you know that the apostles themselves, when they were born again and the church was running, you know the place they were going to pray for? It was not for, but where they were going to pray quite often together? In the temple. In the temple. It was a place that was opened because they got used to that that's where God is. You see how far away we are from everything? Something's wrong. Something is wrong. And I'm asking myself a question. What's wrong with me? Where am I? Have I been deceiving myself also in the ways of the world and Satan? And where are we standing? Where is our ministry? What is our goal? What are we trying to achieve? Amen? What are we trying to do? We need to awake ourselves. My wife, she said, you know, she heard that uh, Spurgeon, how many of you heard about Spurgeon? Is he from England or Scot Scot Scotland? When he began to, you see, in those days, people were so sold out. They took Jesus literally, closely. And uh, he was so serious about what he was teaching at, for, at the beginning that his messages were, he was receiving his messages on his knees, only in prayer, and he was writing every word that God was giving him. And then he would come to the pulpit and he would read everything what God said. Later on, he stopped that because he got matured. But when he got matured, he didn't quit his attitude toward God, his reverence, his responsibility and everything else. My God, I pray for revival. We need revival. We need revival. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Jesus, we need to come back to the place where, we, where, where people were. You know, the, did I tell you about how it was all in past and no longer now? Did I tell you how the Salvation Army started? And what kind of meetings they had? You know, they had such a powerful meetings. I mean, they were sold out to God. First of all, sin was number one on their agenda. They were looking for that thing like they're looking for mice to get rid of in the church. All right? Like they were looking for rats. No, no, it's not going to be here. There was nothing about sin. And, and they knew that they have to deal with that. But you know, when they started the Salvation Army, the meetings, they were so powerful that they had to build shelves. Why? Because, and the world called them uh, sleeping saints. Because the power of God was upon people. They were laying on floor on the floor for hours out of them. So they used to put people on those shelves like that, one upon another. So, because there was no place in the room. So when these would wake up, they would get up and they would fill the, the shelves with others. It was constant move like that. There was such a power, such a need for God, such a hunger, such a holiness, such a reverence, such an interest that people were just oh, in awe. But my Bible says that God is yesterday, today, and forever is the same. He doesn't change. So where is these things now? What has changed? Why we don't have this? I'll tell you why. Because as soon as the church was starting in those days, you know what they were doing? Praying. They were praying. And you know what? They were not depending on the leadership to pray 
and to bring things to pass and to bring that revival. The congregation prayed together. The hearts were together. They were coming together. They were praying. They were seeking God. And the leadership was looking over them. They were working together. Everything was together. Everything because they felt it's my home. It belongs to me. And I have to look after this. God was pleased. Today we have Bible studies. And a main service. There's nothing else. Nothing. Nothing. Where is the passion to see together things again? Even for getting together and just for the sake of discussing the word of God, being the word of God, being together. Just be together around here for prayer and word and, 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 and encouraging each other. That's how they used to live. I pray that God is going to revive us again. That we will come back to where the church is supposed to be. I'm not an expert in that. But I look back into the history and into the Bible, and I read from that, and that's how they were. They were breaking bread every day together in different houses. It's not about, let's make, you know, people made a program from this. Let's make cell groups. It's not about cell group, it's about self Denial and self-excitement like that. That people will be willing to get together. Not because of the cell group. But there's no willingness to do it. No desire. Can you imagine believers can survive without seeing each other a week? Do you see what the problem is? Believers can survive without calling each other and say, how are you? And we call this family. You see what the devil, what the devil is doing? We have to get back. How many of you know how many people are sick in a, in a church? And what are they suffering with? How many of people praying for each other? Nobody cares anymore. Because we are looking for more power in our life, not others' interest. But the books, the Bible says that we should look for each other's interest more than for ourselves. Where is it? And do you think Christ is happy? Do you think that is the church? I'm bees, I have my own family. Yeah, sure, they did the same. But did God call us to a new life? If we believe that we have the anointing and the power, where is that power to be in unity? Where is that power to love? Where is this? And I often ask myself a question. In three years, nobody called me and asked me, how am I doing? And I am the shepherd. I'm not trying to condemn somebody. But I'm asking myself a question. Why? Is that the spirit of Christ? Maybe I'm lacking something. Maybe I need prayer. My wife. You know the pastors, the people too? Did you know that? Maybe I have a need. Maybe I'm sick. And I was. And I was hallucinating here on Tuesday night because I had fever. I was here. Who prayed for me? Thank you. Thank you. But this is what I'm trying to say. A few people prayed. Thank you. You know why? No, it's not because of you. It's not because of me. It's because of us that we lose in a sight of Jesus. That's why we need to come back to basics. 
from where we've fallen. Well, today was the end of my teachings on that subject that God has given me a couple of weeks ago. You know, I don't just get subjects from a book, from my uh, notes or from computer anywhere. I just get the subject from the Holy Spirit. I pray and God speaks to me to tell you things that I present on this television program. This is very important because we don't want to hear anything that belongs to man. We want to hear what God speaks to us today now at this point of time, at this moment. And I so cherish the Word of God. I, I just so love the Holy Spirit. I thank God for that fellowship and for the voice that He is given us His voice to hear to and to listen to. So can I pray for you right now? Can I believe God for your miracle right now? So let me stretch my hands toward this camera and believe God for you. Father, in the mighty precious name of Jesus, I thank you for being so powerful in our life. I thank you for your goodness, love, grace, anointing. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your word. And Father God, I speak healing to that person that has high fever right now. In the name of Jesus, I send somebody with a high fever that is watching us right now. I speak healing to that person, Father. Somebody's teeth just being healed in Jesus' name also. I just give you praise and thank you, Lord. Touch everyone, everyone who is watching us today. And bless everyone, everyone who has the ear to hear and the eye to see. Lord, help your people today to move on into perfection. In Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Well, friends, thank you so much for watching this telecast. This week, our series announcing something that is coming up at the end of November, and you don't want to miss this opportunity. Please stay tuned with our ministry because there is so much more anointed ministry that is coming your way. God is using us to help you. Otherwise, I would not be here. And thank you so much for helping us to do so. So, thank you so much for your support. We are looking forward so much to gain supporters. We are still on a very low uh, place with supporters. We need more supporters to carry on what we do, and we need to do more, and we want to do more. Some powerful things come in your way. If you would like to become our partner or supporter, please give us a call. Make that decision to stand with us and support this ministry. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much for your support. Well, stay tuned, don't go away. Sarah is coming to share with you marvelous things that are coming your way that you don't want to miss. And God bless you. We love you. Shalom to you. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah, and thanks for tuning in. First off, we have a brand new website with a better design, easier navigation, and more programming. Come check it out at www dot house of david ministry dot org this month at house of david we'll be having a very special event to celebrate the holidays it is the house of david hanukkah special it will be filled with performances from various singers and groups there will also be interesting discussions with guest speakers and a very special teaching from rabbi Gennady centered on hanukkah and the connection to jesus our messiah it will be hosted on our website live on thursday november 28th and Friday, November 29th from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. All this to be followed by live service on Saturday, November 30th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We look forward to hosting this event and hope that you watch it. Tell your friends, your family, and anyone you know to come watch online. Celebrate Hanukkah with us. As a side note, I can't tell you how grateful we are to have partners and friends like you who continually watch us and support our ministry. From the bottom of our hearts, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you have made a way for us to come. Lord, you came and gave your very life as a sacrifice so that we could come clean before you, Lord, without guilt or sin. And Father, we give you thanks for that. And we worship you, O oh Lord, for you alone are worthy to receive all our
Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name Yeshua. For he is the name above all names. Hallelujah. We bless the name Yeshua. Messiah gave his life in my place. Sending your son who gave himself a ransom for our sin. Perfect atonement, a spotless peace offering you have given us a way to you through him. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name Yeshua for he. House of David Jewish Messianic Ministry is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.